All right, so the next tool is the flood select tool. So basically a flood select tool defines a selection with a single click. So unlike the selection brush where you have to drag the brush around to define your selection, for the flood select tool, you just use a single click to make the selection. So just like the selection brush, it bases its selection on the color value of the click pixel. Another difference between the flood select tool and the selection brush is it has a tolerance value, which affects the number of pixels selected. And it also includes a contiguous or non-contiguous option. And I'll explain all of this as we demo it. All right, so let's demonstrate the flood select tool now. So the first thing we're going to do, and this is really important, is you have to make sure that the pixel layer is actually selected, meaning the image itself is selected. As you can see here, if you do a lot of adjustments, the adjustment layer will be selected by affinity. So you want to make sure it is not here or you're going to get very weird behavior. So I'm going to go back here and make sure that this pixel layer, the, the image itself, is actually selected. All right? That's first step. Second step is let's click on the flood select tool, which is this one right here. That's the flood select tool. Click on that. And then, as you can see, there is a tolerance value here. Okay, let me demonstrate first a high, high tolerance value. So I'm going to click the sky. So I'm hoping that, that only the sky will be selected. But if I click on that, you can see that it, the tolerance was so high, it even, it even selected the rocks, which is not what you want. So we can lower it. Let's just lower it to around 30%. Okay, let's try that. Okay, now that looked pretty good. All right. So you don't need it to be perfect because you can make adjustments to the selection later on. What you want is to get as much of the selection correct as possible. Then you can make some tuning later on. Okay, so let's look at this. So it looks pretty good, right? Except that these portions here, as you can see, were not selected. Now, what's the reason for that? So the reason why this portion here was not selected, this, this tier in the corner, is because we have set contiguous to be checked. So contiguous means that only those pixels which are connected to the, the pixel I clicked will be considered. So because there is a border here, which is separating these pixels from the main sky pixels, it was not included. All right. So what you can do, you can give it a try. Let me unselect first. Command D to unselect. I'm just going to uncheck contiguous. Let's look at the behavior. Okay. So if I click on that. So you can see now these portions were also selected. But because it's contiguous, it also considered every other thing, which made it worse, right? But that's what contiguous does. Contiguous will consider every every pixel, even those which are not connected to the pixel you click, right? So I'm just going to check contiguous because it looked better, right? So I'm just going to click on that. And then to make sure I get this clicked, what I'm going to do is choose add here. So this is the add so I'm going to add to the selection and I'm just going to let me zoom in that. Let me just click on these portions right here to add to the selection. There you go. Okay, so it's just a one click and that's basically that. So you can see that the flood select is much more efficient, right? Because you don't need to drag. It's just one click to make the selection. And that looks pretty good. All right. And so what we're going to do here is just reduce the exposure of the sky. And so to do that, again, make sure that the pixel layer is selected. And then we're just going to go to adjustments button here. Let's click on that. And then we're going to just reduce the brightness. Okay, I think brightness is the one that does the best job to reduce the brightness of the sky. There you go. So look how nice that is. Okay. So that is the brightness adjustment right there. And close that, and we're done with that. So we just Command D to unselect. So let's move on to the next tool. Okay, so the next tool is the Marquee Selection Tool. So the Marquee Selection Tool is available in various shapes, rectangular, elliptical, column, and row. So selection is applied by selecting the shape and dragging on an image, which we will show in a moment. All right, so for the case of image editing, you might use the, um, the marquee tool to focus on an existing area if precision is not critical. For example, in this case, I, let's say I just want to enhance the color of this, the, the colors present in 
these two persons right here. So it's not critical that it has to be a perfect selection. I could use the marquee tool and just select that. All right. And then if I go back into my pixel layer, just adjust the colors here. So let's just go into HSL. All right. So let's just make the yellows a little bit more saturated, right? Like so, because there's no other yellows in this area, it's not critical that it has to be a perfect selection there. Or maybe the this purple here or this pink could be also a little bit more saturated like so okay and that is basically the marquee selection that's how I, I could use the marquee selection for image editing so it's a sort of faster way to get something done okay let's move on to the last one okay the final one is the freehand selection tool Basically, this is used to create a selection by drawing. So you draw to create a selection. You typically will need to connect it to the initial starting point, which we'll demo in a moment. And it has a few types, freehand, polygonal, and magnetic. So let's demonstrate that. All right, so let's just demonstrate this. So for the freehand tool, you go into the same place as the marquee. So what you want to do is to bring up the options. There is a small arrow here, right? That's what you want to click and that'll bring up the options. And uh, you can now choose the freehand selection tool. There is a few options here. So, okay, so let's just demonstrate each one. So let's just have the freehand here. Freehand, basically you will just draw the selection. So let's say I want to darken just these chairs. I can actually just draw the selection like so. Right, and then just connect it. And you can see now it is selected. Right? And then I can just lower the brightness here. So make sure that the image is selected and then just lower the brightness of these chairs here. Okay, so this one was not a fantastic result. This is a case where you need something more precise. Right? So let's just undo that. Command Z to undo. So unselect that. Okay, so let's use another selection here and let's just choose the polygonal. Okay, maybe this will be a little bit better. So polygonal means you create the selection by, via clicking some points and this will form some sort of polygon. So let me just demonstrate. So let's say I want to select these bunch of seats. You just basically just click, right? So that will be the starting point. And then you can see that as I click on the various points in the path, it's actually cr going to create a polygon here. And there you go. It's pretty easy. I find that's the most useful, All right? And um, again, let's just lower the brightness of these chairs here by the brightness and contrast, lower the brightness. And that's, that's a nice look to that. The last option here is the magnetic tool. It works similar to the polygon tool, except it will use some intelligence to actually snap onto the edges. So you can see that as I drag my cursor i'm not clicking on anything it's actually going to snap on certain edges right okay so the main problem with this is sometimes it snaps into the wrong place it's not like the polygonal tool where i have full control over how i want the polygon to be created so i find the magnetic tool not as useful but um that's just my opinion right there so that is the polygonal tool so let's look at the difference now. So this was the before and the after. So I just have one more example to show you regarding selections, which is pretty important. And that has to do with handling selections where the edges are not very well defined no? or it's very complicated for you to do selections. Like if you have hair here, this is a good example of where the selections, if you do it, by any of the means we talked about would not be enough to do a proper selection because it won't be precise enough. So I'm just going to show you how to handle situations like this, you know, where you have hair and the like. So Affinity has a very nice tool for this. Let me just demonstrate this. All right. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and, of course, the most useful one would be the brush tool. Let's just go ahead and do that. 
I'm going to use the bracket key to make it a little bit larger. All right, like so. And I'm going to make it snap to edge. Okay, so I'm just going to click on that. All right, so you can see um, it was not a fantastic result. You can see that I'm making errors all over the place because the, uh, the edges are not very well defined, so it's making mistakes here and there. Of course, I could do the subtraction here to refine it further. I could do the subtraction here, but you will see that it's obviously impossible to make perfect selections of things like this, like the hair, you can see it's missing things here and there. So manually doing this would be really an impossible task. So what you want to do in such a situation is you could actually refine the selection. So I'm going to just show you the refine tool, which can be used in any situation where the selection just makes mistakes, right? So what you want to do is just click on the refine tool here. Okay. And you can see all the errors that have occurred. So what you do with a refine tool is simply brush on the edges and using its logic, it's going to analyze further the edges and try to get the selections more correct. So in terms of the parameters, the best parameters I will say to set is the mat here. You're asking Affinity to make the judgment of which one here should be in the foreground or the background. Okay, you could also try foreground and background if you want to remove certain items. But to make things simple, you just use matte here. And then we can uh, keep the defaults here. We'll just make the brush a little bit larger using the bracket key. And so what we want to do is just paint over the edges. So let's just do that. So all you have to do is just paint over the edges right here. And let's see if it will correct the items here. Okay, so you can just paint like so. And then it'll do the analysis and you can see now it has now a much more precise selection after the, the refinement. See, you don't have to use much intelligence. You just let affinity do the work in this case. Okay, so you see how it corrected all of that. Okay, so I've just done some corrections here. Yeah, so that's basically that much improved. And then once you're done, you have to click apply. And there you go. So you now you have the selection much better done. Now let's say for this situation, I want to really take care of the background, not the dog itself. So another operation which I'd like to show you is reversing a selection. So you can actually go into the select menu here and then just do invert pixel selection. And what will happen is it'll invert. So instead of the dog, you now have the background. So let's say I want to reduce the saturation of these greens because it's a little bit too bright for me. So again, you can go into HSL here. Let's choose green. Let's just reduce the saturation here. Okay, so maybe why don't we just reduce the whole thing? Okay, just going to reduce that. There you go. I think that has a better look. All right, so here was the before. And here was the, the after. So there's many things that you could do with selections. Uh, another very common usage of selection is to blur a background. And so let me just bring back the selection of the background here. Again, it's just command click. All right, so this is a selection of the background. So you can also blur the background here. So I'm gonna have to go back to this background and then we can apply the blur. So we're gonna go into the lens blur here. Okay, and then we can adjust that as well. I mean, it's just an option right there. Okay, if you want to do that. So that's the before and the after. All right, so I hope you found this video helpful. That's selections. That's a really important skill to learn. And if you use Affinity Photo, that's really an essential. This is really essential stuff. And uh, it's not easy to learn because Affinity has so many options, but I hope in this video, it clarified it for you. So I hope you found this entire video useful. And if you did, I'd really appreciate if you subscribe, like, and share this content to help keep the videos coming. And till the next video, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.